Well, good morning, everybody. How are you this morning? Happy, happy, happy Thanksgiving to all of you. Of course, uh, our Thanksgiving must only go to the Lord because He's the only one who's deserving of our Thanksgiving, of our gratitude, of our adoration. Again, we would like to welcome uh, our uh, guests who came back today, Pastor Paul and Katie, right? Kathleen. Kathleen has the handsome son there. And of course, Sharon and their daughter and son. I a very familiar face. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, uh, just glory to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So prepare your hearts this morning, and I will be calling Brother Nell to lead us in opening prayer. Of course, he will be doing the announcement. Okay? And just so you know, today is a special day. As always, Sunday is always a special day. But again, this is so even more special because uh, aside from uh, we will be celebrating our Thanksgiving uh, lunch today, we, I will be also dedicating my grandson right after the service. So you will, uh, I hope you can stay and join us in the dedication, baby dedication of my grandson. Okay, Dr. Ornell. Uh, thank you, Pastor Rick. Uh, good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, welcome to our Sunday service. Today and uh, greeting you uh, happy, uh, happy Thanksgiving to all of you, and uh, I'm glad to see you all this wonderful Thanksgiving day. So I searched the uh, and the uh, why Americans and Canadians celebrate Thanksgiving, and I've learned that they celebrate Thanksgiving because. They want to reflect uh, uh, of the blessing in the past and want to express their gratitude to the blesser. And that's the right way to do. And Thanksgiving should be a lifestyle to every one of us because of the goodness and faithfulness of our Lord. And our celebration should be focused on uh, the blesser the Lord our God, right? And before I pray, I want to read the Psalms of David in Psalms 1, uh, chapter 9, verses 1 to 2. Then I will jump to 10 and 11. David said, I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell all your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing the praises of your name, O Most High. And in verse 10, David said, Those who, knows, who know your name trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Sing praises, sing the praises of the Lord and thrown in Zion, proclaim among the nations what he has done. So today, let us praise the Lord for his good and his love endures forever. Amen. 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 So as we celebrate Thanksgiving today, let us focus our celebration. God bless us, our faithful God our praises to God and our loving God. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, gracious and loving God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for the love and grace you express to all of us through your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the salvation of our soul, O God. Thank you for the eternal life that's why we can, Lord, enjoy life to the fullest because of what you have done. Thank you, God, Holy Spirit, in our midst today. We can celebrate Thanksgiving because of you. So receive our offer to you, our praises and worship this morning. May your name alone be glorified, O God. 
So our mother, we entrust every part of the service. This morning, uh, we entrust our worship team. Lord, bless their heart. Lord, may everything we say may please you, O oh God, and may glorify your name. And even your message, Lord, as our dear pastor might deliver your word, we pray that you will give him the strength and the power to, re to deliver your word, O oh God. May your word, Lord, be a word of transformation to all of us for your glory. Our Father, we also entrust our little children. We pray that you will bless their hearts, O oh Lord, as they study your word. We thank you for the teachers who teach them and guide them in their life and young lives, O oh God. Even to our giving, Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. And, and for this, O oh God, we offer a portion of it and bless the people, your people, O oh Lord, as they feel. So, Lord, uh, we ask you now to take control of everything we do. And everything we do, we give glory to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, before we call our worship team, let's go to our announcement first. So, in our midweek service, we invite you to join. This is a good break for all of us. So, we have a good break for the week. We have fellowship and uh, pray together and pray with one another. So we log in earlier so that we can ex have extra fellowship at uh, 7 o'clock. And official time of uh, start is 7.30. So on Wednesday, our exhorter is Tito Boy. Uh, and if you have prayer requests, please call Tita Resi, Pastor Rick, Pastor Mike, me, and Tita Tess. So, Mission Street Supply Repacking, they did this last week, and we have a uh, final, final one on Saturday, October 9, at 9 a.m. at the same place, um, NSS Residence. So, we still accept donations. So, this is the last day to accept our donations. Oh, this is uh, Sunday service. Uh, on this coming Sunday, our worship leader is Brother Ronnie and Sister Jasmine. Opening prayer is Pastor Rick and the Word, and represent is uh, Bolaran family and Quack family. Our leaders' evaluation meeting uh, this coming Sunday at uh, this uh, in this. Uh, Milton Mil Mil Sports Center, meeting room number three. This is the one that the children use. Yes. Okay. So please come, all the leaders are invited to come. Giving. Uh, we have, tightly, we use uh, the popular one and we have the uh, box there if you want to give your offer. And that's it. Uh, please. Uh, Prepare our hearts as we welcome our worship team. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Happy Thanksgiving Day to everyone. Um, before Paul, um, I give the message, Pastor Rick, Pastor Mike, no, um, the reason why we have the chair in, in the middle of us, um, Jesus Christ is in us, <laughs> he's in the center of us, but um, uh, I'll just be needing this for my, um, because the last time I got accident at my workday, so I can't stand that much. Um, because I'm shaking if I stand too much. So bear with me. Uh, 
brothers and sisters in Christ, but I know the Lord is with us. Amen. Amen. Are you all excited? Amen. Amen. Yes. And good morning to all our visitors, guests, and welcome BACF family. And uh, happy Thanksgiving again. And from our family to yours, uh, this is one of my favorite times of the year. Uh, Thanksgiving Day holds a special place in my heart as it has always been cherished time for me to gather with family and friends, express gratitude, and create lasting memories. By the way, for some of you who don't know me, my name is Divine Grace, one of the worship team members, and I'm thankful, blessed, and honored to have uh, the opportunity and privilege to be here as we gathered in this place to give honor and praise to our Lord of Lords and our King of Kings. In 1 Chronicles 16, verse 34, Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. It is steadfast love endures forever. Amen. You know, there are so many things that we can be thankful for in this season. My family and I reflecting on how thankful we are for God's blessing. As I take time to give thanks to many blessings in my life, I want to let you know how grateful I am in this congregation in one of them. As I took time to reflect on my own life, I felt my heart become emotional, and I cried before God as I thought about my life. It's such a great blessing to be me, and I'm grateful to God for how He changed my heart molded me and used me by transforming my life. He accepted me for who I am, despite not deserving His grace and mercy. There came a point in my life when I was lost, but I was found. He turned my life into a message because of the unconditional love of Jesus Christ. I have a message, Pastor, I'm not done. <laughs> Yes, our, our message for today is in Psalm 100, verse 4. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. I titled my message, I'm thankful. I'm guessing we've all said these words at some point or another. We typically know what we're thankful for, but do we always know to whom we are thankful? The Hebrew word, tadol, it means confession, praise, and offering. When we give thanks in the truest sense of the biblical word, we offer God our praises and acknowledge to Him that He is the giver of all good gifts. Of course, the greatest gift from God is salvation. By grace through faith, Jesus Christ. Even if everything else is going wrong in our lives, we always have the good news of the gospel to give thanks for. We can always praise God for creating and loving us unworthy sinners. We can always praise Him for Jesus' death and resurrection that paid the price for the sin that no good works or intentions could ever pay. When we confess that Jesus is Lord and Savior, we can praise Him for eternal life He has given us and that life with Him lasts forever. The gospel is our everlasting reason to give thanks. But of course, because God is always good, we can always find more in our lives to be grateful to Him for. This may take some serious seasons of trials and suffering. But because God is always with the one, He redeems true faith. We can trust He is doing good in our lives, big, small, and often unexpected ways. Psalm 69, verse 30. I will praise the name of God with song. I will magnify Him with thanksgiving. Giving thanks to God. So what does it look like to give thanks to God? As I mentioned, thanksgiving is an offering of confession and praise. So what first comes to mind is prayer and worship. We can express our gratitude to Him with words privately or corporately. 
but it is easy to forget that obedience is a form of praise in another important way. We express our love and gratitude for God, all He has done for us. Our pastors teach us in reference to loving God that applies to giving thanks through obedience. Imagine you have a child, an ager who says, Mom, I love you. And I'm grateful for everything you've done for me. You've been so good to me, but I'm not going to listen to what you say. Would that make you feel loved or appreciated? Obedience is a response to salvation led by the Holy Spirit. It's not the work that contributes to our salvation. We are saved by grace alone, through faith alone. And I'm learning in this season that obedience is an act of praise and thanksgiving. He is worthy. So to conclude, as you and your families gathered around the table this Thanksgiving, take a moment to pause. Remember who we offer our deepest thanks and the why. He is worthy of our praise and offerings of thanks because every good and perfect gift comes from Him and He works all things together for good for those who love Him. May I ask everyone to please stand and as we pray, let's continue to pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you with a heart overflowing gratitude. Thank you for the countless blessings you have poured into our lives. We are deeply grateful for your love that never fails, for your grace that is always sufficient, and for your mercies that are new every morning in our lives. You have been so good, and that your faithfulness endures through all generations. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of its life, for the wisdom, health, and strength you give us each day and for the ability to experience the beauty of your creation. We praise you for your simple joys, the light of the sun, the laughter of loved ones, and the peace that comes from knowing you are near. Father, we thank you. You're not only for the good moments, but also for the challenges that have shaped us. In the struggles that we encounter, you have been our strength in every single day. In the storm that we face, you have been our shelter. Even when we didn't understand, you were working all things for our good. Thank you for your faithfulness through every season and for the lessons you have taught us along the way. We are grateful for the provisions you have made in our lives. Our home, our food, our work, our community, our families, the ministry that you have given and everything you have entrusted to us. Help us to always remember that all good things comes from you, and may you use what you have given to bless others. Most of all, thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, and the salvations we have through him. Your love is beyond measure, and we are humbled by the sacrifice that made on our behalf. Thank you for the hope of eternal life Peace that comes from knowing we are your children. Lord, our hearts are full of thanksgiving. May our lives be a reflection of the gratitude we feel. Help us to praise you. You are not just with words, but the way we live and loving others as you have loved us. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, the Father through him. To you, Father, we give all the praise and honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen and amen. Hallelujah.
give him honor, Lord. Give him honor. Give him praise as an honor. Let's exalt the Lord. He is worthy of this praise.
the only one that's deserving of our worship, our praise, thanksgiving, adoration. He's the only one that's good. He's the only one that's faithful. He's the only one that's loving and gracious to you and to me. He's the one, only one who can save us. And he did when he came down here on earth to die on the cross of Calvary. God is deserving of our adoration. God is deserving of our worship. David wrote in Psalms 103, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Forget not all his blessings. Forget not all his favors, his protection, his provision, his preservation for you and for me. Who forgives all your iniquities? Who heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from destruction? Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies? And who satisfies your mouth with good things? So that your youth is renewed like the eagle. Psalms 105, oh give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing songs to him, talk of all his wondrous words. Glory in his holy name. I don't know about you folks, but every day, before getting out of bed, I thank the Lord. Before I start anything, I thank the Lord. I come to him. Lord, thank you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I thank you for the new day. Lord, I thank you for a renewed strength. Lord, I thank you for a new morning. I'm looking forward for your grace and mercy for the day. And when I end up, end up my night, Lord, I thank you. I praise you for your strength that sustains me throughout the day. Your help, your provision, your protection, your preservation. There's no one like our God. There's no one like him who deserves all that is within us. Our very own fiber, the very strength of our body. He deserves it, folks. He's the only one who died on the cross of no one. No one. He died on the cross of Calvary for you and for me. And so today, Yes, Thanksgiving Sunday. The world celebrates, not, not all the world, but most of the people in the world celebrate Thanksgiving. So what? What's, what's make it different for you for me? Many from the world gathered together around their dining table celebrate Thanksgiving. Just, they're just thankful that they're alive today. But we, you and I, should be thankful every day because of Jesus Christ. Because of his sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. Because of his shed blood on the cross. You should, we should be thankful people not just on Thanksgiving Sunday, but every day of our life. The very moment you wake up in the morning, give thanks to God. Before you lie down on bed, give thanks to God. Life, Thanksgiving must be a lifestyle for you for me because of Jesus Christ. And so this morning, as Sister Grace said, sometimes probably, or maybe you're going through something today, but nevertheless, He still deserves the glory. He still deserves Thanksgiving. Whether we are in the valley or the mountain top. We're in troubles. We're in victory. We're in sickness and in health. He still sits in the throne and still deserves our thanksgiving and our adoration. So this morning, folks, the house is full. Praise the Lord. 
We have a full house. May your hearts be full also of thanksgiving and gratitude to God. More than anything else, our hearts must be full of gratitude to God. Father, we thank you, we praise you, we honor you this morning. And we glorify you, Lord God, for you are good. You're good all the time, and all the time you're good. You're unchanging. You're a constant God. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Whether we have turkey in our table or ham, or just simply have plain bread to share together as a family, that's not what Thanksgiving is all about. But Thanksgiving is from our hearts full of gratitude to you. Of course, we thank you for provision. We thank you for the nice dinner that we will have later on, even today. But most of all, our hearts is focused on you alone. Thank you. And we honor you this morning. And we give you glory and praise. In Jesus' name. Let's give the Lord a God offer and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just be seated. Just be seated. I think we have a little more chairs. We have some big seats here, one, almost a full row here. There's a full row here, come on. Praise God. Well, our Sunday school will proceed to their room. And the teachers, of course, we thank the Lord for our volunteers and teachers who are teaching our kids. So, anybody? There's a there's a big a full row of big up here. Please. Hey. Those who are standing, please. Uh, there's a lot of chairs in front. Uh, prime real estate and nobody wants. <laughs> oh, brother King, move over here. <laughs> I think that goes uh, back, uh, back seat to be for the kids when they get out. Brother Soji and you roll. Can you please move here? If you don't mind. Yeah. You roll. Please move uh, here in front. Yeah, there you go. Now we're talking. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise God. God is good. It's good all the time. Amen. So prepare your hearts. This morning. again. Welcome everybody. I might not be able to, to mention your name here in front, but please later on after the service. Allow me to, to come to you and just greet you. Uh, happy Thanksgiving and introduce yourself, introduce yourself to me. I saw that I can also introduce myself to you. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Pastor Ricardo Jumacchio. Pastor Rick, they call me. And I'm the lead pastor of the Electrician Fellowship and we welcome you. Okay, so prepare your hearts morning to hear the word from God through our dear Pastor Mike Ortiza. Praise, praise, hallelujah. Let me see this. Set up the stage for you. Praise God, hallelujah. Hey, everyone, and welcome to our Thanksgiving Sunday service. It's a blessing to see all of you today. And, uh, and uh, let's uh, break the ice this uh, morning by having some uh, um, trivia or joke should I say and uh, okay let me set up this my uh, powerpoint and my pointer as well so um, if you get the correct answer you'll be awarded or should I say rewarded with a free lunch after <laughs> <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah praise God 
free lunch, free lunch after a while. All right, so are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. Are you ready? Yes. Amen. So you got four chances, four chances for free lunch. All right, so let me, um, um, you know, here in Canada, we uh, celebrate our Thanksgiving every second uh, Monday of uh, October. Um, my uh, sister-in-law from the U.S. Uh, told me last night that uh, they are celebrating their Thanksgiving on the third uh, Thursday of, uh, of uh, November. November. So whether um, Thanksgiving is uh, Thursday, or Thursday is uh, October, or um, it's in November, Thanksgiving is always before Christmas. You agree? All right, so the question in the floor is, where does Christmas come before Thanksgiving? Anyone? Where does Christmas come before Thanksgiving? The year before. The year before? No. Nope. <laughs> Anyone going once? Oh, come on. <laughs> In the dictionary, in the dictionary. You have free lunch, all right, brother, you have free lunch, all right. Question number two. Listen close. What always comes at the end of Thanksgiving? Anyone? Clean up. Christmas. The letter G, the letter G. The letter G, and who got the right answer? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. The couple. All right. The couple. All right. I, I, think, I, I think I'm losing this game today. <laughs> third question, third question, third question. What do you call a running turkey? A leg. A leg. Nah. Anyone? Anyone? It's getting harder. Ostrich. Ostrich? No. <laughs> I like turkey. No, no. Run away. Anyone? Anyone? Final call. Anyone? Over. I run away. I run away. No. 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 All right. Nobody got this one. So the answer is. Shannon <laughs> got it? Alright, praise God, Sean, I didn't hear that one. Alright, and uh, your, your, your last chance for, for those who, who uh, didn't get any correct answer, your last chance. What did the turkey say to the computer? Anyone? Anyone? You turkey. <laughs> no, Brother King, that's, uh, that's incorrect. Why not call anyone? The answer is Google, Google. <laughs> if you didn't get that one, ask Brother King and then pick it up. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right, folks, it's, uh, since uh, Jesus is graceful and he loves you all, everybody will have free lunch today. <laughs> Those who got the correct answer will receive the double portion. Thank you, God. All right, for all the servers, everyone who gets the right answer will get, will get double portion. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is good all the time, all the time. Praise God. Hallelujah. But uh, before we get our stomach filled today, let's uh, uh, let the Lord fill our hearts with His Word. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so today, um, the Lord's message is entitled, From Blessing to Blessing. Could we read it together? From Blessing, blessing to blessing. blessing. And it's based in 2 Corinthians 9, verses uh, 12 to 15. You don't have to grab your Bibles and have you covered today. So, would you stand up with me as we read our text? 2 Corinthians 9, verses 12 through 15, in the words of the Apostle Paul. Let's read it all together. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And to us, 
Your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but it's also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Keep reading. Because of the service by which you have proved yourself, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for the generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. Verse 14, And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given to you. And finally, Thanks be to God for his indescribable gifts. And that's God's holy and inspired word. He has his power and blessing in his word. Please be seated. <clears throat> Friends, as we delve into this passage, we will see a beautiful cycle of blessings. First, we're going to talk about the blessing of generosity. Then we're going to talk a little bit of the blessing of gratitude. And finally, the blessing of grace. And of course, uh, the word is not complete without application. So we're going to talk about the application of our passage today. So to understand that better our text, uh, we have to go back to the histori historical context. And uh, of course, this uh, happened uh, during the uh, time of Paul. It was in the uh, early uh, first uh, century. And uh, the, um, the uh, church in Jerusalem, um, the people over there, they were in extreme uh, um, poverty. And they, they were suffering, um, not only because of the famine that hit the land, but of course, um, they were believers, they were persecuted, and they were discriminated uh, by the uh, people around them. And so Paul, um, during his uh, missionary journey, he was uh, traveling from uh, one uh, region to another. So he was, uh, he was uh, traveling um, from Galatia, and then he, he went to Corinth, and then he, he went to Macedonia. He was visiting um, um, different churches over there. And if you're wondering where are these uh, places right now, they are in the present, they are uh, Turkey and Greece, and uh, some of the churches, they are in the South uh, Eastern Europe. And uh, the reason of Paul uh, was there, he was not only doing his missionary journey, but he was also um, collecting funds from uh, one church to another in order to support the poor church in Jerusalem. Um, please note the, the church in Jerusalem, they, they were uh, mostly Jewish uh, Christians, while the other uh, churches outside of uh, Jerusalem, um, they were Gentile Christians. And as you know, during the time prior to the church, there was an um, animosity between the Jews and the Gentiles. As a matter of fact, many of you know that the Jews called the Gentiles dogs, right? They, 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 were, um, they were animosity, but when the church was born, this uh, difference between them, the difference between them um, was, uh, uh, was diminished. And so the Gentile churches outside of Jerusalem, they were sending funds to the uh, Jewish uh, uh, Christian church in Jerusalem. You get it, right? Yes. yes. All right. So... Paul was collecting funds in uh, other churches. In other words, he was doing fund raising for the poor church in Jerusalem. So keep that in mind, and that's the historical context of our passage today. So let's jump to our first point, 2 Corinthians 9, verse 11. And uh, let me read it for us. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on some occasion. Is that what it says? No, it says on every, every in every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in what? Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving to God. The word enriched could be defined as enhanced, increase, or 
I would rather use the word bless. Amen. Bless, right? You will be blessed in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. Folks, listen. You are blessed so you could be a blessing Amen. to others. Would you say that with me? You are blessed so you could be a blessing to others. That's right. You are blessed not to keep the blessings for yourself, but rather to share them. Does someone say share? Yes. Yes. Share. Share them. And when you do so, you become a steward of God's grace. You become a channel of blessings to others. Early this year, um, many of you might remember that we have our kids Against Hunger Canada packing, and it was on, uh, was it May, buddy King? We had it uh, last May, and uh, all of you, in one way or another, has been a part of this uh, uh, fundraising uh, because, of course, we, we have to purchase the, um, the, the items um, um, before we could pack them, and then some of you was uh, actually, oh, some of you were also in, in that location and we also invited the uh, kids from uh, different schools and they were our primary uh, popper so so to speak and uh, i believe we packed uh, 102 kfc boxes which is uh, which could be translated into more than 22,000 meals uh, did you get it correct but again yeah, more than 22,000 meals, and these uh, food packs, they were um, distributed. Some of them um, were given in churches here in Canada and other and ministries in Canada. And um, uh, most of them, they were shipped to the Philippines. And, and guess what? I, I love these uh, photos, and these, these were the uh, recipients of the food packs that you can see. That uh, many kids, uh, they were blessed with, with a food pack that we pack and 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 send, and uh, more, more than just satisfying their uh, physical need, um, it's also an opportunity for the uh, pastors over there to share the gospel. Amen. Uh, so Amen. praise God on on that one. Earlier this uh, week. Um, uh, many of us, Pastor Rick, myself, and uh, other folks in the church, we went to Sue on Fire in, in Burlington, and then uh, we uh, packed some uh, clothes over there, and we transported them to Tita Lim's uh, place, and, uh, and uh, Monday and Tuesday, um, some folks, they already started uh, uh, packing the, the clothes. And let me just take this opportunity that we are still accepting <laughs> donations. Yeah. I know you should do the, our final uh, packing this uh, coming uh, Saturday uh, at the same place at uh, Tita Lynn's place. Uh, so praise God, hallelujah. It says uh, verse 11. So let me go back to verse 11 for a sec. Let's read it all together. You will be rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion and through us your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Friends, every time you give, whether it's your time, resources, or talent, you are participating in something greater. A service that costs thanksgiving to our Lord Jesus Christ. Your giving reflects the character of the generous God. Remember James 1, 17, it says, every good and perfect gift come from where? Above. From above, right? So once the recipient recognized that those gifts, those uh, presents are not really from us, but ultimately they are the blessing from the Lord. Praise God. Then Paul moves beyond the blessing of generosity. Remember, our first point is the blessing of generosity. Let's go to the second point. The blessing of gratitude. The blessing of gratitude. 
Let's do alternate reading. I'll do the first verse, and you guys could do the second. Are you ready? Amen. Amen. Verse 12. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Verse 13. Amen. The first thing I would like you to note is the word service over there. It's mentioned twice. This uh, service in verse 12 and uh, the second time is because of the service. Um, in verse uh, 13, the word uh, service in the original uh, Greek uh, language is the same word as uh, ministry, ministry, diakonia. And, um, and uh, Paul is, is uh, saying that it's not only goods that we, it's not only goods that we could bless other people, but we could also bless other people through our ministry, right? Yeah. Like once we spend our time, our time, our talent for other people, we are blessing these uh, people. So service is ministry. So let me, uh, let me uh, illustrate that one. Friends, what's this? A glove. A glove. A glove. Not a glove, a glove. <laughs> Praise God, hallelujah. I have a glove with me on its own. It's lifeless, it's powerless, and unable to accomplish anything. It can pick things up or move in any way. Do you agree? The glove is only effective when a hand, when a hand fills it. There you go. The hand gives its purpose, direction, and power. In the same way, you and I are like this globe. Amen. Without God's Spirit within us, we may have good intentions, but we lack the power, we lack the direction, we lack the capacity. <clears throat> Friends, we were created to serve. Amen. Could I hear an amen? amen? We were created to serve. But it's only through God's presence that we could do that one. Amen. Through the help of the Holy Spirit that's already in us. His hands in us that we are able to do His work and make meaningful impact to this world. As Jesus said in John 15, 5, do you remember that? The vine and the branches? Apart from me, you can do nothing. nothing. Apart from me, you can do nothing. That's what the Lord says. But when we yield ourselves to Him, allowing Him to fill us, we become instrument of His love, of His grace, and His service. When others see our ministry slash a service, especially to the body of Christ, they recognize that the hand of God is at work in us. If you agree, you could say amen. 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 Praise God. Our text says, overflowing in many expression of thanks. Overflowing in many expression of thanks to God. Expression of thanks. That's gratitude, right? Overflowing expression of thanks to God. I love the phrase attitude of gratitude. Have you heard that one? Attitude of gratitude. You see, folks, during that time, the people, the the uh, the church in Corinth, they didn't only put the message of the gospel in their heart. They also live it out. They also live out the truth of the gospel. And that's the very reason Paul says the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. Confession. I love the word 
testimony. I prefer the word testimony. It's, it's clearer. So we could say that because of the service with which you have proved yourself, as we praise God for the obedience that accompanies your testimony of the gospel of Christ and your generosity in sharing them with everyone else. In the gospel, Jesus commands us to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. And that is the gospel. Part of the gospel is, you see, friends, sharing is caring. Amen. Sharing is caring. Can you say that to the person next to you? Sharing, sharing is caring. caring. Let me try it one more time. Another side. Sharing, sharing, sharing is caring. caring. It rhymes, right? Sharing is caring. Your generosity is more than just a good deed. It's a tangible, listen to this folks, it's a tangible expression of your faith in Christ. Could I see a witness? Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right, so let's go to our last uh, point for today. The blessing of grace. The blessing of grace. Let's read it all together. And in their prayers for their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. I would like to highlight the word surpassing grace. Indescribable grace. Indescribable grace. Friends, these two phrases have a name. Actually, and the name is Jesus. Jesus Christ. Surpassing grace, indescribable grace. Paul is actually referring to our Lord Jesus Christ because Jesus is the ultimate expression of the love of God Amen. to each one of us. Remember John 3.16? John 3.16, let's Let's um, confess it all together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that whoever believes in him shall have an eternal life. He gave. Gave is a gift. It's a grace. Paul was a teacher of the law. He was a Pharisee. Many of you know that. He wrote almost half of the New Testament, half of the book of the New Testament to be accurate. Paul, however, found him himself lost of words when he considered the magnitude of God's gift, the, our Lord Jesus Christ, and that's the very reason he used the word indescribable. Folks, listen. All blessings in this world or this world would offer would fail to the blessing of having Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. 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 All blessing in this world fails to the gift of the eternal life through Christ. Jesus is the ultimate blessing. In Christ, you are beyond blessed. Could I see witness? Amen. Amen. In Christ, you are beyond blessed. Earlier, I mentioned that the passage is a cycle of blessing. Verse 11, you'll be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion and through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving. That's the blessing of generosity. Verse 12 and 13. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the, of the Lord's people, but it's also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Verse 13. Because of the service by which you have proved yourself, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies the confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. That's the blessing of gratitude, expression of thanks, confession of the gospel, living out, living out the gospel of Christ. Verses 14 and 15, and in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out because of the surpassing grace God has given you. 
thanks be to God for his indescribable gift, the blessing of grace. But there's uh, something that I don't like you to miss. As I was uh, studying this pa passage, this word caught my eyes, the word because. Be because. You see, friends, Paul tells us about the blessing of generosity and then the blessing of gratitude. And suddenly it says, because of the surpassing grace, because of the indescribable gift. In the passage, chronologically, it shows blessing of generosity, then blessing of gratitude, and finally, the blessing of grace. But if you come to think of it, this is a cause and effect, right? The cause of all the blessing, the first two blessings, actually comes from the blessing of grace. It's, that's why it says because, because of the blessing of grace. You know, that the blessing of grace is the time when we receive our Lord. Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. Our hearts are transformed. We no longer focus on ourselves. So we live beyond ourselves. This time we care for other people. Amen. And lives are transformed. This is the blessing of grace. From the blessing of grace, it goes to the blessing of gratitude. We express our gratitude to God by loving others as He commanded us. Now, friends, let me let me clear let me be clear with that one. We are not doing good works to be saved. Yeah. We yeah. are saved to do good works. Amen. 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 We are saved to do good works. Therefore, we, the blessing of gratitude, we live out, we live out the truth of the gospel. And from the blessing of gratitude, it goes to the blessing of giving. We bless others with our time, with our talent, with our treasure. People see the transforming power of the gospel in our lives. We could feel and see the love of God through you, through me, through us. Consequently, more people will believe in the truth of the gospel. And once again, it will point back to the cross, to the blessing of grace and then the cycle would continue Amen. friends that's the very reason why i titled today's sermon from blessing to blessing because it's a cycle from one blessing to another and it goes back to the blessing of grace folks as we celebrate Thanksgiving with friends and family, let's reflect on the many ways we have been blessed. Perhaps uh, later today, as Pastor Rick uh, mentioned, uh, many of us would have Thanksgiving uh, uh, dinner with friends and family. And often it's a, uh, uh, should I say, tra a tradition that we reflect on what we are thankful for. You might be thankful of the good health. Uh, throughout the year, it could be a blessed uh, financial uh, blessing. It, it could be um, because of our loving friends and uh, family, you know, uh, blood family, church uh, family. But I'm going to leave you a question this morning. Are you ready for this question? Have you received the greatest blessing of all time? Amen. Amen. Have you received the greatest <coughs> blessing of all time? If your answer is yes, would you share the greatest blessing to others? Amen. If your answer is no, would you receive it today and make Thanksgiving 2024 the best Thanksgiving ever? Would you pray with me? Hallelujah. Let's bow our head. Heavenly Father, we come before you today with a heart of uh, thanksgiving, with a heart of attitude, Lord God, knowing and believing that every uh, blessing we receive comes from you, Lord God, because all perfect um, uh, things, Lord God, uh, comes from above and that's uh, from you, Lord God. Thank you for this uh, blessing, Lord God, and uh, help us to be good stewards 
of uh, this uh, blessing that uh, through us uh, others could uh, feel, could see the love and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, Father God. And Lord, as we um, continue our life, Lord God, may other people be blessed uh, through us, uh, Lord, Lord God. Uh, and. Uh, and uh, we give you back all of the glories and thanksgiving because you alone deserve the glory. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and thanks. And everyone say, Amen. Amen. Amen.